Hello, hello, it's Amy Johnson, owner of So Simple of Lynchburg and the head troublemaker at amyquilts.com. I am at the Janome M17 and I'm going to just do some freehand quilting. We're going to do some curly whirly feathers. These are drawn lines. I started off with half circles. So right here, from here around to here is a semicircle. And then I flipped my, my bucket, it was actually a bucket, from here to here and did a semicircle going in the opposite direction. And I did that three times. Then I came back in and did a little swirl going into the center and that was free handed. And I'm just following my markings for right now. I like to have my markings for the spines uh, stitched before I do anything else. Tension's looking good on the top, looking good on the back as well. So if you have a machine that this foot did not come with, this foot will not work on it. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. I feel like I'm getting used to, oh, wait a minute. That's why it's not going any faster. Let me speed up my speed slider. There we go. I'm going to start making them a little smaller right here so that when I come around over here, I can put some feather plumes in. stop and reposition my hands. Both of them are kind of up in front of the needle. I'm using a Schmetz 9014 needle. We have really good luck with the Schmetz. Um, all right, so we've got that one stretch of plume done. Now I cannot 
or I can't do it very well, go backwards and fill this in. So I just like to follow around and I'm going to put what I call a teardrop right in here. And that allows me to kind of split off from uh, that juncture there where there's two spines coming off at once. So once I get done with this curl here, I'm going to come back down and we'll decorate some of the plumes as I go. So let's go ahead and fancify up that first plume. And this one, I love doing just an echo in the plumes. Can totally do some other things here. Like this one's a lot rounder, so I could do a little swirly thing, and then instead of going over the top back, I can come back around. So it almost acts as an echo with a curve in it. Let's see. And then you could just do, you know, a curve, swirl. I didn't really give much decoration to this, this side, did I? But I love when I can use this contrasting color thread on my design so I can really see it. So I'm just going to flip this around. This is just a half yard piece of fabric and then I put the batting in between so it's a great size for practicing on. Uh, now you don't want to get too reliant on being able to turn it around uh, because when we're quilting a big quilt we can't necessarily turn it around. but I'm also not going to kill myself trying to keep it still if it is an option to move it around. I can go ahead and do a plume here and finish out this tip and I can come around here. Uh, it all just kind of depends on what floats your boat. Kind of hard to do these super continuously because you're going in different directions. And then like I said, I can't, well, I'll just say I don't like to feather from the top down. The movement is just different and it's kind of difficult.
here's where we can kind of talk about feathers. So right here, do you see the big difference between this plume and where it attaches? And this plume, they're like extremes. This one's almost too narrow. And this one's too wide right here. You really don't want to bring your plume all the way back to where you started or else you'll have trouble getting the next one farther down the spine. But you also don't want it to have it go out too far because then it kind of gets really blunt. So I try to keep that angle smooth so that if your eye continued it, it would be a pointy teardrop that's curved but it's not going all the way back. It just kind of looks like it. And then sometimes you just kind of have one that just kind of lays almost on the spine because of the shape of whatever you're quilting. Now there are other styles of feathers that you can make as well. You'll notice I'm not really backtracking between my spines. I do that just because it's easier. If I wanted to backtrack right on the same line, I have to focus a lot better and really slow down. So I keep it further out and it makes my plumes a little bit more defined as well. But then there are things called bump back feathers and a couple other variations. And let's see, this is a lot more open than our last one. I could do some sort of a fill in there if I wanted. Oh goodness, we're done. Well, look at that. Let's put a fill in. Now let's wait for next week. Let's wait for next week. So I'm gonna come down. After I go around this one again, we'll kind of fill that in a little bit. I could do that on this side too. If I wanted to increase the plume size. Obviously can't do that here. But it almost looks like, you know, like I've embellished the inside of the plume when actually I added on to the outside of the plume. I'm going to skip that one. That would be a great one to do, but since I'm not being consistent on how I'm filling it in, I just kind of want to um, skip a few. We can come back up here and move into this guy. What about if we did something like that? Mm, this one kind of looked cool. This one, this one almost looks like an embryo. <laughs> I try. And you can just come up with a single one. Like that. What else can I do? Oh, I've seen people do uh, something like this and that. I don't know, that's one of my favorites. It's like really pointy, and I just, I love the curves. So once I've got that plume made, then I can do it, you know, going down, but I can't make the original plume going back down. Not without it eventually getting pretty wonky. 
What else? So this is all practice. You can doodle to practice. You can stitch to practice. You can draw with your finger on paper. Not finger paint, just, you know, trace out the shapes. It really, really does help. like that one where I'm doing that little loop. That's fun. You know, sometimes it's not about the finished project as much as it is about the process. Let's come up here and do something here. There's my last one. All right, folks, I am done. All right, I'm Amy from So Simple of Lunchburg, home of amyquilts.com. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.